This is an example of the type of question you're likely to see on the load chart portion of the Manitex specialty exam. When you take your exam, whether it's the pencil and paper test or the computer-based test, this is what the problems will look like for the load chart portion of the exam. You'll have a data table that gives you the information you will need to solve the problem. You will have the question which will tell you what you need to calculate and you will have four answer choices. You will also be provided with the load chart for the Manitex crane. Well, let's go ahead and get started. I'll, I'll work through this problem for you and this will give you a pretty good illustration of a method you can use when you take the specialty exam. Now, one thing to keep in mind, as I work through this, I'm gonna be going very slow. When you take the exam, you will have to go a lot faster. You need to be able to do these problems in about four minutes each, or you're likely to run out of time on the exam. And that is a common problem on these exams, is running out of time and not having enough time to answer all the questions. So keep that in mind as, as we go through this. I'm, I'm going really slow because I want to illustrate the process for you. Okay, well, let's go ahead and get started. The first step of any low chart problem is to identify what the problem is asking for. Find maximum net capacity lifting off the main boom. So it's a net capacity problem. Next step, let's write down the formula for net capacity. The formula for net capacity is N C for net capacity equals G C for gross capacity minus deductions, D E D. And I do like to abbreviate wherever I can to save time on the exam. Okay, once we have our formula down, let's draw out the configuration for the crane. Draw out how the crane is set up. I like to use a diagonal line for the boom and a horizontal line for the radius. Now we want to draw in all of our accessories and we want to label the diagram. Main boom, 48 feet. Let's go ahead and write in 48 feet for our main boom. Radius, 20 feet. And the horizontal line represents your radius. We have a hose reel installed. Hose reel is a deduction, so let's go ahead and draw it in there. And one, one reason for drawing everything out like this, it helps us keep track of our deductions and we are less likely to miss a deduction during the exam. I like to use HR to, as my abbreviation for hose reel. Now we don't have a weight here yet. We'll have to go back here in a couple of minutes and look up the deduction weight for the hose reel. We're, we're just drawing everything out, getting it labeled. We'll put in the deduction weights uh, later. Go up to the next column. There's nothing else in this column. Let's go up to the next column. We have a 23 foot jib stowed on the boom. And I like to use a triangle shape to illustrate my jib. Label that line. Okay, moving on down, um, we have a single shiv block with two parts line. And this is the symbol I like to use to represent a block. You can use whatever you want to. And I'm gonna label it with SS for single shiv block. Okay, we've got two parts line. Instead of drawing in both parts line, I just put a 2x. And one thing great about the Manitex exam, there are no deductions for wire rope. We don't have to worry about deducting our wire rope, so we can go ahead and write in a zero here. For the Grove, the Manitowoc, the American, a lot of the other cranes, the Link Belt, you have 
wire rope deductions, which add an additional step to the process. The Manatex is simpler. You don't have to, you can leave out that step. Moving on down, we have our single shift two parts. We have 13 pounds of rigging. For rigging, I just like to use a, a triangle shape or a couple of lines to represent my rigging. And the rigging will normally be given to you in the data table. So we know that rigging is 13 pounds. We can go ahead and write that in. Okay, we got everything. We've got our hose reel, good. Jib, good. Single shift block with two parts line. We've got that and we've got our rigging. So now we need to go to the low chart notes and find the deduction weights for these different components. For the jib, the deduction weight is found in the main low chart. Zoom this up here a little bit so we can see it. The bottom row of the main low chart, you will find the deduction weights for the stow jib. You'll notice that there's not just one weight for the stow jib. It's variable. It's based on the length of the main boom. If you've got 26 feet of boom extended, it's 480 pounds. 38 feet, 330. 48, 260, and so on. Now we have 48 feet of boom, so we find the column for 48 feet. There it is. Follow it all the way down to the bottom row, and there's our deduction weight for the stow jib, 260 pounds. Let's write that in. 260. Now we need to find the deduction weight for our block and you will find the deduction weight for the block in the table of deductions. Single shiv load block 260 pounds. Write that in. 260. Now we need to find the weight for the hose reel. The hose reel deduction weight is also in the deduction table. 190 pounds. Now we can total everything up. You will be provided with a calculator when you take the exam. If it's a pencil and paper test, you'll be given a little handheld calculator that will add, subtract, divide, and multiply. That's all it will do. It's very basic. If you take the computer-based exam, the calculator is built into the testing software and you'll be able to bring up the calculator when you need it during the exam. Let's total this up. We've got 260 for the jib plus 260 for the block plus 13 for the rigging plus 190 for the hose reel. Total deductions, 723 pounds. Okay, and we'll just forget about this for the moment. We, we do have deductions that we will plug into our formula at some point, but now we need to find the gross capacity. The gross capacity is going to be either the line capacity or the chart capacity. We'll look up both the line capacity or line pull. It's also called line pull. Then we'll also look up the chart capacity. Then once we have these numbers, we're going to use the lowest of these two numbers for our gross capacity. Let's look up line capacity first. To find your line capacity, you're going to use this information in the data table where it says 37,000 pounds breaking strength. If we go over to this table in your low chart notes, you'll see that there is a row for 37,000 pound minimum breaking strength wire rope. It's also called rotation resistant rope. And sometimes on the exam, they'll use, they'll, it'll say rotation resistant. Sometimes it'll give the breaking strength. Just, it's a way of changing up the questions that they use on the exam. 
but 37,000 pounds braking strength. We have two parts line. So if we go down this column to this row for the 37,000 pound braking strength, we'll see that our line capacity or the line pull is 14,800 pounds. Now we need to find our chart capacity. And for the chart capacity, we'll use the boom length and the radius. To find that, we've got 48 feet of boom. So we find the column for 48 feet of boom. We've got 20 feet of radius. So we'll use the row for 20 feet of radius. And where this column and this row intersect, that is our chart capacity, 8,160 pounds. Now we have everything, we just need to plug it in. For gross capacity, it's the lowest when we compare line and chart. Whatever is less, line or chart, we use which, whichever is, is the lowest. So 8,160 minus 723 for deductions, which we calculated down here. Now all we need to do is the subtraction, 8,160 minus 723, leaves us with a net capacity of 7,437 pounds. We go up to our answer choices and there it is. We select 7,437 as our answer.